You're welcome to Kema Freak, where I share sewing tutorials, fashion business tips, and DIYs weekly. My name is Kemi Morugbe, in case you are new here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to sew this lovely dress. I shared a pattern drafting tutorial for this in the previous video. I'll link it up above and in the description box. But in this tutorial, we'll be sewing this piece. So come along with me. Here I have my patterns cut out for the front piece already and you just cut one piece for each because it's asymmetrical and also I went ahead to cut out lining and interfacing which I ironed in on each piece. So for this side piece we have half an inch allowance at the top and the middle while along the side we have one inch allowance. For the center piece we have half an inch allowance all round and for the other side we have half an inch at the bottom, the shoulder, the center and one inch at the side. Now before I go ahead, I would like to mark out the pattern for the wording I'll be cutting off because I intend to add a breast pad to this. So I marked out about 3.5 inches round the bust point and you can just use the measurements for the radius of your bust which is the distance between the under bust line and the bust line. That's the distance between the nipple and under the nipple. So for the center piece, I wanted a full part that was spanned through the entire piece. Okay, so I just marked the top right there and went ahead to mark it on the other side. I will draw a straight line to connect these two points. So the part will extend from this line to the under bust line. I will go ahead to cut out this pattern as this area I'm shading serves as the pattern for the wording I'll be cutting out. You can also make use of an already made cup but that's not what I'm using for this tutorial. Note that the two side panels have the same cup so I don't need to mark it out on the other piece. While cutting out your pattern remember to place a notch at the bust point and the under bust point. This will be a lifesaver when you are sewing because it just saves you a lot of trouble. Okay so now I've cut out the pattern for the wording and I'll just put it on my wording and cut it out with seam allowance only along the bust line. So here is the back panel and I have also added seam allowances to this. We have the side seam allowance of one inch and every other place have seam allowance of half an inch. So I also cut out the lining which is exactly the same as the main fabric and ironed in the interfacing to give it some firmness. Here is the sleeve I cut out using my pattern and it's, it's just the same thing for the both sleeves. You can check out the tutorial on how to draft a basic sleeve on my channel. And here I have the yoke cut out on the blue crepe fabric and I also added seam allowances all round, half an inch all round that pattern. So let's move on to sewing this piece. I'll be starting by attaching the center panel to the side panels by half an inch while doing this you have to take note of the notch you created at the bust point this will guide you when sewing like i earlier mentioned and i'll be sewing this together by half an inch i'll do the same thing on both sides so that we can have the full front bodies sewn together You're welcome back. This is what we have after joining the panels together. I'll proceed to place notches on the seam allowance, especially on the part with wording because that part is curvy. Then I'll iron open these seams to just give it that fabulous finished look. Now I'll be going ahead to attach the yoke to the main bodies, just one of the pieces for the yoke, and I'll attach the second piece to the lining so that we have exactly the same shape for both the lining 
and the main fabric and I'll be sewing by half an inch seam allowance. Once that is done, this is what I have on the lining and this is what I have for the main fabric. Now I'll be attaching the lining and the main fabric together by sewing along the neckline by half an inch. I'll also do the same thing on the back piece as well. So I'll be attaching the lining and the main fabric of the back piece along the neckline by half an inch. Once I'm through sewing the yoke and the main fabric together, I'll go ahead to place notches so that it relaxes properly. Then I'll just take the seam allowance and turn it towards the lining part, okay, so that I can top stitch by one quarter or one eighth of an inch. This will just help the lining relax properly into the dress without struggling to be obvious. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Please, if you are getting some value from this, kindly give this video a thumbs up. It will help more people discover this channel and subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you. Now, let's proceed. Once you are through top stitching, you can steam press that neckline so that it just makes it look more beautiful. And now, I'll be attaching the front and back piece together along the shoulder okay but i'll be attaching the fabric to fabric and lining to lining so i have to open up the each of the pieces and ensure that the seam at the neckline for the back and the front matches together i'll be joining these two pieces together by half an inch remember we are just sewing the front fabric to the back fabric and then the front lining to the back lining but it's just going to be a continuous stitch once you open it up like that. You just need to see my expression while making this voiceover. It's like I have a natural student in front of me demonstrating and gesticulating. Now we are done dealing with the neckline and the shoulder and it's time to attach the front and back piece together and create like the side seam. Okay, so I'll just set the lining aside. Remember we're making a complete in seam finishing. So we're treating the fabric separately and treating the lining separately. It is very important that you pin the two pieces together, okay, so that you won't make any mistake. And while doing that, ensure that your outfit lays flat on each other. We don't want any excess allowance anywhere, okay? So just take your time to ensure the leaf flats and the edges meet where they are supposed to meet so you don't have any need to start making adjustments later. And once I'm through with one side, I'll do the same thing on the other side. Remember once again that I'm just pinning the main fabric together, okay? I'm not touching the lining at all here. Now I'm done holding the sides together with pins and I'll go ahead to do the same thing at the center back which is the zip allowance. I have a one inch wide zip allowance so I'll just be placing the pins at exactly the one inch mark so it will look like I already sealed the zip. Now I'm marking out the measurement from the part I held with pin. I'll be measuring the bust circumference divided by 4 and I'll proceed to the waist. That's why it's good to notch, okay? So if you notch your waist, you know exactly where the waist is on this fabric. Now I'm marking the waist circumference divided by 4 from the center back, not the zip allowance. So I'm just removing the zip allowance. 
So from the waist, I measured the position of the hip and I marked the hip circumference divided by four and I'll connect this together and sew the side seam. I can simply just go ahead and sew by one inch because from my patterns, what I added was just one inch seam allowance, but I wanted to be on the safer side. That's why I had to do this cross checking just to ensure I do this the proper way. So once I'm through sewing the side seam on the main fabric, I'll do the same thing for the lining, okay? Just the same process all over again for the lining separately. Okay, so, and this is what you have after this step. The next thing we'll be doing will be to attach the sleeve. Now I'll pick up the sleeve and sew the side seam, just because I've sewn the side seam for the dress too. Okay, so I'll input my bicep circumference, elbow and wrist circumference and sew along the side like so. And now it's time to attach the sleeve to the main dress. But first let's raise the lining because we'll be attaching it only to the main fabric at this stage. Okay, and uh, ensure that you are using the right sleeve. Remember the both sides of the sleeve are not the same thing. I mean the sleeve curve now. Okay, so now I will turn the sleeve inside out so that the right side can face the right side and I will just sew the sleeve curve onto the armhole curve. But before doing that, ensure you have pinned these two pieces together making sure that the shoulder point of the sleeve aligns with the shoulder point of the dress and also the, the side seam allowance of the sleeve must align with the side seam allowance of the dress and you just go ahead and stitch together. That's why it is necessary that you cross check the sleeve curve when drafting your pattern to ensure that it matches with the armhole curve on the bodies. Now I'll proceed to sew these two pieces together by half an inch. The sleeve is fixed and I'll just go ahead and notch around this seam because it's a curvy seam so it's very important to help it relax properly. Now we also need to sew the lining on this seam but we don't want to do that on the inside of the dress so that the seam won't be visible. It's either you make a piping around this opening to hold the lining in place and still make it look neat or you do this method which I'll be doing here. So just follow me, follow me keenly. <laughs> so I will be attaching the lining but not on the inside. So I'll just lift the lining up a little bit and hold the seam allowance to the lining from the inside. So if you do this, it won't be confusing for you, okay? So at the same time, you have to ensure that the side seam and the shoulder seam aligns with that on the other complex. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll just be holding them together first with pins all around to make sure that they are well positioned and I'll proceed to the sewing machine to sew. The only part which may be challenging here is when you get towards the shoulder, but even that is easy to navigate, okay? So you can see what we have here in neat finishing even on the inside of the dress and the seam is just relaxing inside, okay? Inside, that's between the lining and the main dress. So the next thing I'll be doing now or the next thing which I actually did is to attach the zip to the main fabric. Okay, I left the lining out. Like I said, we are trying to achieve an inseam finishing. So in order to close up that zip allowance, I will turn the lining the other way so that the right side of the lining will be facing the right side of the clothes. I'll fold in the top of my zip and cover it up, cover the zip up with the lining. So I'll be sewing the zip, sorry, I'll be sewing the lining to the main fabric by one inch, which is the one inch zip allowance. So the seam has to be close to the teeth of the zip. I hope you know what I mean by the zip, teeth of the zip. It's just that plastic part of the zip. Okay, at the same time, we don't want to step on it. We just want to cover up the center back of the dress. I just hope I'm making sense because I feel I'm rambling a little bit. Now we have the last opening which is at the hem and we'll be covering this up 
using this our uh, flares circular flares if you want a tutorial on how to achieve this type of flare for any measurement please check the link in the description box i will also place it in the card above hopefully i will remember that okay so i'll be attaching the crino line to turn the edge of the peplums or the flares I don't even know the right word to call it and I'll be sewing the crino line onto the dress onto the edge of the flares by half an inch so basically I'm sewing on the right side the part you are seeing is the right side of the peplum so that when I turn the crino line the other way it exposes um, it kind of hides the seam allowance so now I'll be attaching the crino line to the main dress using this hemming glue which is basically just a glue that works with steam and I'll be pressing it in using my steam pressing iron okay it has to be a steam press iron so that when you steam on it it melts the hemming glue and it just makes it stick to the fabric so I'm doing this on the wrong side so you can see I see on the right side I turned it around so that the crino line can be hidden on the wrong side so with this I don't really need a lining I didn't use a lining for this you can as well use a lining for this especially if you want to include a fusible interfacing but I didn't want to do that for this in this case the crino line is helping us to do two things one is to give us a clean edge and the second is to create a form of waviness and structure for the hem of the peplum or flare. Okay, so I have three pieces of flare. Remember, we cut this out in the pattern drafting tutorial, and I'll just be attaching it to the hemline of the dress. So, once again, we are making uh, an instant finishing for this. So, I'll just pick up the first two pieces and so round then i'll use the longest piece which is the third layer to turn the seams this is going to come out in a way that the seam allowance we'll have here will be hidden between the second and the third layer of the peplum so that way all our seams are well hidden on the inside so don't be scared to try out this kind of method i mean the inseam finishing because if there is any need for adjustment, what you do is just remove the peplum and you turn your entire dress inside out and you can then make the adjustment. It's not that it's not that deep, okay? <laughs> so just follow me as I complete this entire process. So in order to make this straightforward while I'm on the sewing machine, I'll first attach the three together using pins. So I'll just sit down just so. Mm -hmm. This life is easier. I'm done sewing, and this is what we have on the inner part of the dress. Blood. it looks so nice and clean very neat no seam puckering out anywhere and this is what i have on the right side still neat and looking all you know beautiful thank you so much for watching please give this video a thumbs up if you have watched this extent i want to believe you have gained some value give it give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel you can share this content as well so that the family gets bigger thank you and see you in the next video